and welcome back to the online learning session today we will begin chapter 2 physical features of India in geography topics to be covered in this lesson are number one physical features and introduction number two physical features of India namely the Himalayan mountains the northern plains the peninsular plateau the Indian desert the coastal plains and the islands number three the Himalayan mountains its characteristics and divisions number four the inner Himalayas or the Himadri and its characteristics number five map work and number six summary topic wise topic of the physical features first of all we learn about the physical features what do you actually understand by the term physical features students the physical features are naturally created features of the earth and natural geographical features consist of landforms and ecosystems before we get into the geographical aspect of the physical features let us take a very easy example for your understanding let us suppose that this is your face and your face here is clearly resembling the earth now if I ask you students look at your face and tell me the features of your face the characteristics of your face what's going to be your answer of course you'll speak about the different organs related to your face so basically you will answer sir we have eyes nose lips ears and hair students similarly if we try to understand by taking this example let us assume now this is your earth and it has some naturally created features for example mountains rivers plains plateau desert coastal plains and islands which you can clearly see here these are mountains this is a river this is a plateau this is a coastal plain now this is a plain and this is an island so all these are naturally created features of the earth therefore all these features are known as physical features or we can also call them as physiographic divisions of the earth now students in this chapter we are concerned about the physical features or the physiographic divisions of India so let us quickly go through the physiographic divisions of India we see the Himalayan mountains now here students if I take you to this map this is your index and as you can see the physical features in this purple color are the Himalayas so we have Himalayan mountains then we have the northern plains the green color is representing the northern plains then we have the peninsular plateau this light brown color is representing the peninsular plateau then we have the Indian desert in Rajasthan you will find the Indian desert the Thar desert then we have the coastal plains students let us see this western side of India and you also see this eastern side of India so the land which is touching the water bodies on the west and on the east are known as coasts and the plains situated along the coasts are known as the coastal plains therefore we have the western coastal plains and the eastern coastal plains then we have the islands named as Lakshadweep and the Andaman and Nicobar Island students now we'll begin learning the first physiographic division of India the Himalayan mountains 
students we see that the himalayan mountains are the loftiest means the tallest and the most rugged means the most rough of the world they stretch across 2500 kilometers from kashmir in the north through arunachal pradesh in the north east these mountains form an arc a very important point here students students if you focus here this is a knot like structure situated north of the jammu and kashmir and uh, this is known as the pamir knot as you can see a belt of mountains extend towards the east of this knot and a belt of mountains extend towards the west of this knot so towards the east of this knot we see from jammu and kashmir we see that these mountains run through the arunachal pradesh and while they do so they form an arc the shape which they resemble is that of an arc now these mountains also help keep the cold arctic winds from reaching the tropical land mass students we know that india lies in the tropical zone therefore the tropical land mass which we are talking about here is india and let us try to understand how these mountains prevent the cold arctic winds students as you see himalayas here in the north of india and let us assume that this is the north pole of our earth and the arctic region you know that the north pole is covered with snow so the cold and chilly winds start blowing from north and they start descending towards south towards this tropical landmass towards india but there is a barrier there is a barrier known as himalayas so these himalayas like this act as a barrier and they prevent all these cold winds all the chilly winds which would have otherwise converted the whole indian land mass into a cold desert is stopped by the himalayas next we see one of the most significant of all the physical features of india the himalayas they vary in width between 400 kilometers to 150 kilometers students if we assume this to be the length of the himalayas then this is the width of the himalayas students if you see the width here around jammu and kashmir and ladakh here if we come down to the himachal then if we look at the area of uttarakhand north of the uttar pradesh that is nepal north of bihar bengal and sikkim and arunachal pradesh in all these regions you can easily find that the width of this mountain is greatly varying so therefore the range in which it varies is 400 kilometers to 150 kilometers now students will learn about the variation in width of the himalayan mountains in greater details once we begin learning the divisions of the himalayas the middle himalayas the outer himalayas or the shivaliks and the purvanchal so students we'll be learning about this variation in greater details when we start learning different divisions of the himalayas and we find the entire mountain belt of the himalayas is divided into three main sections the first section is the greater himalayas where the average peaks rise as high as 6000 meters above the sea level next we see the lesser himalayas with average peaks rising as high as 4000 meters then we have the outer himalayas or the shivaliks where we find most of the hills then we have the eastern hills or the purvanchal covering north bengal and the northernmost parts of the north eastern states so this is the basic division of the himalayas which we are going to study in details in the upcoming slides 
students now we'll move on and we'll start learning the first division of the himalayan mountains that is the greater or the inner himalayas or the himadri this is the northernmost range and is known as the great or inner himalayas it is perennially snowbound it means it is covered with snow around the year and a range of glaciers can be found in this belt of the mountain it is the highest range with an average height of 6000 meters this is an important point students which is to be noted it contains all prominent himalayan peaks the folds of great himalayas are asymmetrical in nature it means that the folds are not similar in their size and shape if they are divided from between now we see that the core of this part of himalayas is composed of granite next we see the prominent peaks in this mountain range as danga parvat mount everest karakoram kanchenjunga and namcha barwa regions covered by this mountain are jammu and kashmir ladakh sikkim etc now students we'll try to broaden our understanding of the greater himalayas with the help of this map and we'll try to put all the characteristics we'll try to learn all the characteristics of the greater himalayas especially those of the peaks and the areas the regions which are occupied by this mountain range with the help of this map now let us go to the uh, topic of the greater himalayas students we have already seen that these rise up to the height of 6000 meters now the most important concept here in the context of map work is the point number 7 and the point number 8 so you will be asked to identify the prominent peaks of the mountain ranges as well as the regions covered by this mountain range so we see one of the important peaks of the greater himalayas dananga parvat lying in the gilgit baltistan area of pak occupied kashmir now if we keep on moving east from the north we come across the karakoram ranges in the jammu and kashmir now if we keep moving eastwards we will find mount everest though it's in nepal if we keep moving further east we will find kanchenjunga in sikkim then we find namcha barwa upon reaching arunachal pradesh so students we have learned some of the important peaks of the greater himalayas and the corresponding regions in which they are found students this is how you should be studying geography you should combine both the elements that is when you read some points as height of any peak or if you for example come across the prominent peaks of any of the mountain ranges and the corresponding regions you should immediately go to the map and try to locate all those regions all those aspects all those elements for example we have located in this lesson so students as a part of your assignment and homework you should do the same work for the middle himalayas or the himachal the outer himalayas or the shivaliks and the purvanchal himalayas so that's all for today i hope you'll combine both these elements of the text and the map and if you have any doubts please keep me posted thank you